So I'd just like to do a brief comparison of human bones, Anna and Z, to plastic skeleton bones. We all have plastic skeletons in classrooms and medical offices and what have you. It's the same one. <laughs> there's like this one skeleton that's been manufactured and replicated. I'm sure there's two maybe, but anyway, I'm used to seeing the same one over and over again. And the human skeleton is different every time. Let's prove it. Come on down and have a look. I have the right, right arm of Anna here, and I have the right arm of Z here, and I have the, the, the right arm of, I don't know who, right here. No doubt that this commonly reproduced plastic human skeleton was modeled on a real skeleton. Yeah, it, it, no doubt that it was. It's not a perfect model. What model is? But it's just one set of bones, and you can look at these three sets of bones, the model and, and then Z and Anna, and see the incredible variety just with two examples as compared to the plastic skeleton in the middle. And I do find the painting on the skeletons amusing because I had to scrape every surface of the bone uh, to clear it of the muscle matter. And here it will give you the impression that there's just little, little daubs, little daubs of paint that cover the bone. Uh, now let's just start with the scapula. Now here's the model in the middle. It's quite flat and smooth in here, huh? It's quite, it's quite smooth on both sides. I don't know why they didn't manage to, to take the impression from the model that they, from the model bone that they got this from, of the incredible wavy contours and grooves that are characteristic of the, of the subscapular fossa. And the little bit of material here that I didn't manage to scrape off helps to highlight the kind of the dynamic contours, the wavy contours of the surface of the actual human skeleton. Same deal with Anna. It's very, very contoured, right? Uh, there's a lot of shape and dimension to the sort of fossa pockets, right, that create these waves as we go over the surface of the subscapular fossa. Unlike this smooth, uh, smooth, flat surface, right? It's not nearly as, it doesn't look like a whole lot of muscle action ever happened here. Now, again, I can't tell you anything about the plastic modeling process, and I'm sure the manufacturers did their very best to produce something realistic. Um, but it kind of fails in that spot, huh? Because when we look at the actual contours of, the, of, these, of these human bones that I've skeletonized here from Z and Anna, and also look at the profound difference between Z and Anna, right? Uh, just in terms of size, shape, contour, look at the dynamic shape of, of Anna's, uh, of Anna's uh, inferior border of her scapula. And then we have Z's, he's got this big curve here, it's quite a bit wider and thicker. He's got a little point here like she does, but a very different shaped point. Uh, here it's just kind of smooth and curvy, that's nice. But, and again, I'm not saying this wasn't someone's scapula, it's just a modeled version of it, um, this plastic skeleton. So, huh, would we be able to guess from the model whether we have a male or a female? That's kind of an interesting question. Right? I'm guessing, I'm guessing a male uh, from, the, from the thickness of the bone as compared to Anna's more fine bone here, but uh, you, can have a, uh, you can have a lot of variety in that, and I'm no anthropologist, so I can't really guess, uh, but it is just, <laughs> just an interesting comparison, huh, to see these different shapes. Of course, we still have some of the ligaments of of uh, Z and Anna at their elbow, and here they've been removed, so we s can't compare the shapes in particular right now. But uh, what a trio, huh? So I guess the lesson here that I'd like to share is um, actual human bones are very individual, 
as we can see from the difference between Anna and Z. And so we'd never want to mistake our plastic skeleton as representative of all of the human form. So thanks, Anna. Thanks, Z. And uh, thanks to our plastic model for helping us to highlight how truly simplified right, our, our models are and that we can always remember that when we're generalizing from a model and thinking that's what it is. Uh, well, that's not what it is. Actually, that's quite specifically what it is not. <laughs> All right? uh, models are important. We can't really do without them. But don't believe them. <laughs>